Here is Bounce reporter Michelle Lemon with owner of Brown Sugar Kitchen in Oakland, California, celebrity executive chef Tanya Holland. Thanks so much, Randolph. Listen, Bouncers, I'm so excited because the guest that's standing here with me is none other than Tanya Holland. She is a celebrity, professional, super awesome chef, and she's here in the studio. Welcome to Bounce Around Charleston. Thank you. It's great to be here. Awesome. Yeah. So let's just get to it, Tanya. So why are you here, first of all, in Charleston? Well, I'm here because I was invited by the Girl Scouts of Eastern South Carolina to uh, be a judge at their Death by Chocolate event. Ooh. Yes, in Hilton Head, and um, you know, all you have to say to me is chocolate and I'll come, you know, plus right. I want to visit, come mm -hmm. back to this area of the country. Okay, yeah. we're so happy that you're here. Thank you. So there's also something special that you're doing. You have a book. And I so do. what's special about the book in the Girl Scouts? Well, the book has been out almost a year, and it's called Brown Sugar Kitchen, named after my restaurant. It contains recipes from the restaurant, as well as some stories of our local uh, vendors and regulars and kind of uh, showcases the neighborhood that we're in. And so it's it's still my baby. You uh -huh. know, it's only a year old. Okay. <laughs> yeah, awesome. I'll be signing the book at the event. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Yeah. So with just that name alone, Brown Sugar Kitchen, I mean... Who doesn't love brown sugar? You know, it's that's it's what I thought. Soul, right? Yeah, it's good for the soul. So your your restaurant was open in two thousand eight. Eight. Yes. In Oakland. Yes. Now I've just kind of heard some stories that <laughs> it wasn't really a desirable place, or some people, some naysayers. Why? Yeah. Is that? Well, I you know this restaurant location was sitting there, um, not quite vacant, but mm -hmm. underutilized, and the the guy who was running the restaurant decided he wanted to sell, and I wanted a restaurant space, and it was pretty turnkey, but it's in an industrial, kind of a mixed neighborhood of industrial spaces, some older residential homes, some lofts, but definitely not a place that was known for destination dining or any kind of dining, really. Okay. Um, so that's why people thought I was a little bit crazy, <laughs> but I thought, well, you know, if I have some good coffee and make some baked goods, then I can always do catering. And it just kind of took on a life of its own, and it's really become a neighborhood center. And um, now it is a destination uh, location, which has been really fun and great, very positive for the neighborhood, very positive for Oakland. Okay. You know, Oakland sometimes gets a bad rap, but it's a wonderful mm -hmm. people with a great historic community of, um, you know, just lots of uh, history there. A lot of definitely. things were started, a lot of movement started. Right, right, richness yeah. there. Yeah. Definitely. So I'm just curious, how did you get your, your love for cooking, your love for food? Where did that come from? It's been with me for a long time. I was trying to play around in my mom's kitchen when I was mm -hmm. a little girl, and then she bought me a miniature refrigerator stove and sink and put it in the garage for okay. me to play in there, <laughs> not play in her kitchen right. because I would play, but I wouldn't clean up, you know, and so I think that was more of the problem. Um, but I've always loved being around food and then my parents founded this gourmet cooking club when I was seven and for 20 years they cooked soup to nuts all these different cuisines with these other mm -hmm. couples and a lot of those dishes ended up in my mother's repertoire mm -hmm. uh, then I went to college and most of my friends were eating ramen noodles out of a package <laughs> oh, or <yeah. laughs> mac and cheese out of a box so mm -hmm. I started cooking and uh, it was uh, one of my last years there I had a, a cookbook a neighbor and I kind of cooked our way through uh, the Moosewood cookbook mm -hmm. and that's kind of how it started. I started working in restaurants in college and okay. fell in love with the industry. All yeah. right. So I believe that the, the atmosphere in the kitchen is very important. So can you describe the atmosphere in Brown Sugar Kitchen? Well, you know, the atmosphere in Brown Sugar Kitchen is unique because there's not a big division between the kitchen and the floor because we have this counter mm -hmm. and the counter just comes up here. So people sitting at the counter can nice. see everything that's happening in the kitchen and often talk to us, sometimes when we can't really talk back. Right, right. <laughs> I'm like, I'm working right now. <laughs> I know, really. I'm really working. Mm -hmm. um, so we, you know, and we, you know, all that screaming you see happening on TV, we can't do that because the customers are right there. They're going to witness everything. <laughs> Not that I would do that anyways. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's, you know, it's fun. You know, and the other advantage of being in the kitchen so open to the dining room mm -hmm. is we get to experience the vibe and we create the vibe right. and the music is going and you know they're watching us and they're seeing the flames mm -hmm. and they're hearing the pot slam and <laughs> um, hearing the chicken fry and all that and so it's I can hear it right now. <laughs> I can hear it right now. <laughs> it's a fun place people like to really enjoy it. I'm really pleased what we've created there okay and, yeah. I, and I know also I love the fact that food itself 
tends to bring people together. Absolutely, of all different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it also has to be the intention. I was really concerned about having a small restaurant. We have 50 seats because I, I wanted the diversity. That's always been very important to me. And it is, It's. I mean, we'll have like all different types of people, ethnic, mm -hmm. uh, age, you know, social, economic, um, everything right. at our restaurant at all hours of the day, which is really fun. It's really great. Okay, now does your, your style of cooking or your favorite dishes, does that reflect your personality at all? Anything spicy that reflects the spice? <laughs> There's lots of spice and Ooh. I am spicy. <laughs> um, and it's also very unpretentious and, you know, I mean the flavor is really important. The presentation's important too, right. but it's not overly fussy or, um, you know, it's all very accessible, which is mm -hmm. also important to me. Again, that's why everyone kind of is welcome and feels comfortable. And we have regulars. I mean, there's one woman when she's in town, she comes every day. There's people who come once a week. Mm -hmm. There's people that come, you know, whenever they're in town, you know, on business. So um, it's a friendly place, and the food's very accessible. Okay, yeah. awesome. Well, I'm hungry already. <laughs> but Tanya, just um, can you encourage maybe a young person out there or someone that wants to start their own business, maybe in this industry? What would you say to them to encourage them? Well, the most important thing is getting the, the experience and going to people who are already successful. If you can work for an owner, mm -hmm. you know, a chef owner, or you're going to get, you know, that best experience. Um, okay. You have to learn from others' success and their failures, you know? Definitely. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, Tanya, you gave us a mouthful right here on Bounce Around <laughs> Charleston. Thank you so much for My being My pleasure. Here. Thanks for having me. Okay, and your book is out there, Brown Sugar Kitchen. Brown Sugar also, Kitchen. Also in West Oakland, California, Brown Sugar Kitchen. So That's thank right. Thank you so much for being here. We enjoyed you so much. Thank you.